Hello dear students, welcome to Precalculus Quarter 1 Module 1 Analytic Geometry. I am Mom Rose and I will be your teacher for this subject. The Precalculus course bridges basic mathematics and calculus. This course completes your foundational knowledge on algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. It provides you with conceptual understanding and computational skills that are prerequisites for basic calculus and future STEM courses. Before we begin, let me know what you already know by answering the pretest. Now let's begin with lesson 1. Lesson 1 is all about introduction of conic sections and the circle. Upon completion of this lesson, you should be able to illustrate the different types of conic sections, namely parabola, ellipse, circle, hyperbola, and degenerate cases, determine the type of conic section defined by the second degree equation in x and y, define a circle, determine the standard form of equation of circle, graph a circle in a rectangular coordinate system, Derive and illustrate the equation of the circle, find the center and the radius of the circle of an equation, and convert the general equation of circle to standard form and vice versa. Completing the squares is very important in understanding conic sections, so let us recall this one first before we proceed. Here are the steps in completing the square method. Number 1. We write the equation in the form x squared plus bx equals c. Number 2, add to both sides the term needed to complete the square. Number 3, factor the perfect square trinomial. And number 4, solve the resulting equation by using the square root property. Let us consider a few examples. Let's start with number 1 x squared plus 8x plus 5 is equal to 0. The first step here is to rewrite the equation in the form x squared plus bx. So in this case, it will be 8x is equal to c. Since our c is 5 and it is positive, then we'll transpose it making it negative 5. The next step is to think of a constant that will complete the square. So let us write this one first. x squared plus 8x is equal to negative 5. The appropriate constant that will be added in this portion is based on the middle term which is 8x. 8 divided by 2 Whatever is the answer, square it. So 8 divided by 2 is 4 squared. That would be positive 16. Remember that whatever you add on the left side will also be added on the right side to retain the equality symbol. Therefore, we can now factor the left side. The factor is quantity x plus 4. We get 4 by dividing 8 by 2. Quantity raised to 2 is equals to perform the right side, so that will be positive 11. Now, square root is needed to get rid of the exponent 2. So, the square root of x plus 4, which is raised to 2, is equals to the square root of 11. Again, always remember that whatever you do on the left side will also be done on the right side to retain the equality symbol. We will be left with x plus 4 since the exponent and the square root will be cancelled. The square root of 11 is equal to plus or minus itself. Since 11 is not a perfect square, we'll just copy this one. But do not forget that a square root will always have a plus or minus. Therefore, the value of x is equals to transpose this portion so it will become negative 4, copy, plus or minus square root of 11. So we will have two answers here. 
x sub 1 and x sub 2. In x sub 1, we'll have negative 4 plus square root of 11, that is approximately 0 0.68, while our other answer is negative 4 minus square root of 11, which is approximately negative 7.38. We'll now proceed to example 2. x squared plus 10x minus 4 is equal to 0. The first step is to rewrite the equation in the form x squared plus bx is equal to c. So, this will be x squared plus 10x is equal to, since this is our C, we have to transpose this on the other side, making it positive 4. The next step is to find an appropriate constant that will complete the square. So again, let's write this one first. Now think of a constant that will complete the square. The same method, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is equal to 25. So we'll write plus 25 on the left side and also do it on the right side again to retain the equality symbol. We can now factor the left side. So our factor is quantity x plus 5. Again, 5 is taken from 10 divided by 2 squared is equal to Perform the right side so that will be equal to 29. Again, place a square root on both sides to get rid of the exponent 2. Now, since the exponent and the square root will be cancelled, we will be left with x plus 5. And on the other side, plus or minus square root of 29, since 29 again is not a perfect square. Therefore, our x will be transposed this one so it will become negative 5 and simply copy plus or minus square root of 29. So, our final answer will be x sub 1, which is, and x sub 2. So, we'll start with x sub 1. We have negative 5 plus square root of 29, which is approximately 0. 39 and x sub 2 is negative 5 minus that is taken from plus or minus so x sub 2 is minus which is approximately negative 10.39 10 with this review we can now proceed to the main topic the conic sections. Let's start with the definitions. Conic section is a graph that results from the intersection of a plane and a double cone. A circle is formed when the plane is perpendicular to the axis of the cone. An ellipse is formed when the tilted plane intersects only one cone to form a bounded curve. A parabola is formed when the plane is parallel to a generator line of the cone and an hyperbola is formed when the intersection of an unbounded curve and the plane is not parallel to a generator line of the cone and the plane intersects both halves of the cone. There are other ways for a plane and the cones to intersect, to form what are referred to as degenerate conics, a point, one line, and two lines. Let us now proceed to the next part, identifying a conic section. 
since there are several conic sections, how do we identify one from one another? We will use the determinant b squared minus 4ac. If the answer to that one is less than 0 and a is equal to c, then it's a circle. However, if the answer of the determinant is 0, then it is a parabola. If the answer is less than 0, but this time a is not equal to c, then the answer is ellipse. If the determinant is greater than 0, then it is a hyperbola. The general form of the quadratic relation of the conic sections is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to 0. Let us now answer number 1. 2x squared plus 4xy plus 3y squared plus 12y minus 1 is equal to 0. We will first identify the values of a, b, and c. As you can see in number 1, in the general form, x squared is beside a, and in our given, 2 is beside x squared, so a is equal to 2. Next is b. b is beside xy, and in our given, xy is beside 4, therefore our b is 4. Lastly is our c. It should be beside y squared, and in our given, 3 is beside y squared, therefore our c is 3. Since we already have the values of a, b, and c, we can now proceed with getting the determinant b squared minus 4ac. We will simply substitute this one. Our b is 4. So we have here 4 squared minus the 4 here is constant multiplied to a which is 2 and c which is 3. So we have here 4 raised to 2 is equals to 16 minus 4 multiplied to 2 is 8 multiplied to 3 is 24. Doing the operation, our final answer is negative 8. Now we know that negative 8 is less than 0. Also, there are two options here, but take a look at the values of A and C. Since in number 1, our A and C are not equal, then let us write this one. A is not equal to C. Therefore, this is an equation of an ellipse. Let us now proceed to example number 2. 3x squared minus 2y squared plus 6x plus 10y minus 16 is equal to 0. Again, let's get the values of a, b, and c first. In the general form, x squared is beside a, and in our given, 3 is beside x squared, therefore our a will be 3. Next is, our b is beside xy, so we'll just have to find xy in our given, but sad to say it's not there, so our b is 0. Next is, c is beside y squared. So we'll have negative 2 here as our c. Now we are ready to get the determinant b squared minus 4ac. We will simply substitute here. Our b is equal to 0, so that's 0 squared minus, again 4 is constant, times a is 3, times c is negative 2. So we have 0, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, 
times negative 2, so that's positive 24. So our determinant is 24. Now 24 is greater than 0. Looking at the choices we have here, hyperbola. Therefore, number 2 is an equation of a hyperbola. Number 3 is 3x squared plus 3y squared plus 18x minus 16y plus 31 is equal to 0. Again, we will get the values of A, B, and C. The same method applies. Beside x squared is a, which is in the given, it's 3. Beside x, y is b, wherein you cannot find it in the given, so simply place 0. Now, c is beside y squared, which in the given is 3. We are now ready to solve for the determinant b squared minus 4ac. By plain substitution, our b is 0, so it will be 0 squared minus 4 is constant times a is 3 times c is 3. Therefore, our answer here is 0. 4 times 3 is 12 times 3 is 36. Therefore, our final answer is negative 36. As you can see, Negative 36 is less than 0. So there are two options here. So look at the values of A and C. As you can see, in our given, A and C are equal. So we have here 3 and 3. A is equals to C, therefore this is an equation of a circle. Our last example is 4x squared plus 4xy minus 4x plus y squared minus 12y is equals to 0. Again, we will get the values of a, b, and c. In our general form, x squared is beside a, therefore our a here is equal to 4. Our b is beside xy. In our given, 4 is beside x, y, so b is 4. c is beside y squared, and in here, we have this portion, there's no number, so automatically, it's 1. So, we are now ready to solve for the determinant b squared minus 4ac. Again, we'll simply substitute our b here is 4. 4 squared minus 4 is constant, a is 4, multiplied to c which is 1. Therefore, we have here, 4 raised to 2 is 16, minus 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Now, 16 minus 16 is 0. Since 0 is equal to 0, according to our options, this is an equation of a parabola. That is all for today. Thank you and see you on our next video lesson.